After playing for several teams in France such as Nice or PSG and after appearing 22 times in the French national shirt, Jean-Pierre Adams arrives at the hospital for a simple knee surgery. He was given an anesthetic that should knock him off for a few hours, but more than 39 years later he has yet to wake. Because of that error, his brain was starved of oxygen and he fell into a coma. Since then, his wife has taken care of him every day, non-stop. Everybody hopes that he will come out of the coma. But the more time that passes, the more it troubles me. His condition does not get any worse, so who knows? If one day medical science evolves, then why not? She said. Keep watching and you will find out all the details about the unfortunate incident and about Adam's football career and what happened to the anesthetist who produced this tragedy. Maybe the name Jean-Pierre Adams won't tell you much, but his life story is amazing. His story begins in Dakar, Senegal, where he was born on the 10th of March 1948. Even though his parents saw that little Adams was passionate about football, they wanted to make sure he had the best education. Thus, Adams was sent alone to continue his schooling in France at the age of 10. Luck has not been on his side since he was a kid. The first time, he suffered a serious knee injury that could have ended his dreams of becoming a professional footballer. After overcoming this obstacle, Adams was involved in a serious car crash, and although he escaped with only cuts, his close friend Guy Bordeaux was killed. That didn't stop him either, and he joined the army. It may not seem like it, but that was the best decision for his football career. At the age of 19, he was selected to play for the military squad, and when he was 21, he married Bernadette, a woman who still loves him today. With Adams being one of the best players in the military squad, France's first league team, Nîmes, offered the defender the chance to sign his first professional contract in 1970. Nîmes' side, at the time, was one of the best in the club's history. In 1971, qualifying for the first time in an European competition. Also, in 1971, the team's coach, Kader Firou, was named the coach of the year in France. In 1972, the team ranked second in the championship and in 1973 reached the semi-finals of the French Cup. These impressive performances would bring Adams a first national team call-up in 1972. In the rugby defense of Nîmes, there is a pillar, a kind of force of nature, a colossus of uncommon athletic power, Jean-Pierre Adams, said the former Argentina captain Angel Marcos, who played for Nantes. In the summer of 1973, Adams moved to Nice, a team that was trying to regain its appetite for performance after winning four titles in the 50s. Adams remained a consistently strong performer and in 1975 was named in France football's team of the season. In the subsequent campaign, Nice finished second in the championship. Even though that season ended with a pretty important performance, Adams suffered from injuries. Those issues would mark the end of his calls to the national team. In his five years at the national team, from 1972 to 1976, he and the French legend Marius Trezor were nicknamed the Black Guard, forming one of the best centre-back pairings in all of Europe. After being one of the key men in Nice's team, the 29-year-old defender signed the last contract with a team from the first league, this team being PSG. At that time, PSG was not the giant that is today, being founded only in 1970 and not winning a trophy until the arrival of the defender in 1977. Adams played only 42 games in two seasons for the Parisians with two middle table finishes before he was released from his contract, ending his time at the top level. After one year in Division 2 with Mulhouse, Adams would eventually finish his career at Chalon in 1981, aged 33, alongside Polish striker Josef Klose, father of Miroslav Klose. After spending the entirety of his career in France, he made the decision to step into coaching. 
This stage was to take place again in France, Dijon, where Adams had chose to take the first stage of his coaching degree. Sometime later, however, he suffered a knee injury and had to quit the curse to go to a hospital in Lyon. An initial scan showed damage to a tendon at the back of the knee. What seemed lucky then, can now be categorized as bad luck, was that he met a surgeon en route. He urged him that it would be best to have surgery in the next few days and Adams agreed. It's all fine, I'm in great shape were among the last words to his wife Bernadette as he left on the morning of the operation. On March 17, 1982, the surgery took place. Bernadette was called to the hospital, informed that Adams had slipped into a coma. He suffered a bronchospasm which starved his brain of oxygen. The anesthetist made a major mistake and administered the wrong dose of anesthetic. But why did this happen? As in the case of many errors, it was not just one factor, but a multitude of factors. The anesthetist was overseeing eight operations at once, including one particularly delicate procedure involving a child that got much of his attention. Thus, the operation was overseen by a trainee. In addition, the appropriate bed was not used for such surgery and the drug used was known to be problematic the perfect condition for everything to go wrong. His wife remained by his bedside every day and night, hoping for a change in his condition. A few months later, Adams was moved to a new institution. Here, too, luck was not on his side as he undergone another operation as an infection taken from hospital had reached his bones. After a while, the hospital said they could no longer look after Adams, so he was moved home. Bernadette nicknamed the house as the house of the beautiful sleeping athlete. All this came with financial problems for the Adams family. Adams' football career has helped a lot. Footballers, football teams and even the French Football Federation have made numerous donations and charity matches to raise money. After years of legal battle, in the mid-90s the French court adjudicated on the case. Both the anesthetist and trainee were given a one-month suspension and fines of $815. It may seem like an unfair sentence considering the seriousness of the deed and honestly it seems the same to me, but given the large number of operations that the anesthetist supervised at the same time, a human error is quite probable. On the 2nd of March 1997, the small village of Castillon sur Sambre inaugurated its new stadium in the presence of Michel Platini and Bernadette Adams. The stadium is still known today as Jean-Pierre Adams Stadium. Even after all these years, Bernadette loves her husband and gives him all the support he needs. I have the feeling that time stopped on the 7th of March 1982. Jean-Pierre feels, smells, hears, jumps when a dog barks, but he cannot see. His wife explained. A weird side effect of the trauma is that Adams does not age. He can still take care of the basic needs of the body. He can breathe, drink and eat on his own. People on Facebook say he should be unplugged, but he is not plugged. I just don't have the courage to stop giving him food and water, said Mrs. Adams. Bernadette can be described as an extraordinary wife who loves her husband for better or for worse. Even though Jean-Pierre is 73 years old, she still hopes that his condition will improve in the near future. Everybody hopes that he will come out of the coma. His condition does not get any worse, so who knows? If one day medical science evolves, then why not? Will there be a day when they'll know how to do something for him? I don't know, said Bernadette. Life, such as it is, continues for Bernadette, 77, and Jean-Pierre, 73. Tell me, what you think about this whole story? Has the anesthetist received the sentence he deserves? Moreover, do you think there are many women, or even men, who take care of their partner as Bernadette has been doing for 39 years? I look forward to your opinion in the comment section. Thanks for watching. See ya.